Hi again then guys and welcome back to the very first game in the Forza Horizon series once again. Still a brilliant game actually even though it feels kind of limited in many ways uh, compared to the games after it especially in terms of the free roaming. As far as this car goes I'm surprised but also kind of not surprised and I'll get into why as to why they haven't brought this car back because of course the Corvette is pretty much a car that you'd expect to be in any racing game in some form be it classic, modern, road, race there are just so many to work with and this one is of course the open top version or the convertible of the Grand Sport Corvette and the Grand Sport is more of a commemorative edition with the motorsport routes in there that falls kind of between the normal C6 and the Z06. Certainly not as quick as a Z06 and definitely not a ZR1 but still quicker than the base model and also it has kind of a Z06 body kit to it but with a couple of extra stripes and some smaller detail changes. Now as far as this car not being featured, I mentioned of course that it both does and doesn't surprise me. The reason why I would say both is because it surprises me that a Corvette that is fast is not featured anymore. <laughs> but at the same time, it's not surprising because at the end of the day, it is just an open top version. So it doesn't exactly bring anything to the table that something like a Z06 or especially a ZR1 can't do anyway. And in a game like Horizon 4, this car just isn't really necessary. In fact, if anything, I would have said that a car like this would have been more appropriate for Horizon 2 and definitely Horizon 3 with that much warmer climate of Europe and Australia. In England, not so much. Plus, you don't exactly see a huge amount of Corvettes over here. But of course, you don't see a ton of the cars in the game over here at all, let alone rarely. Now, as far as the specs go, I said that it does fall in between some of the others. The pricing is still very good, actually, even though it is a open top and it's a commemorative edition. It's still only 60 grand. That's not much at all. That's very good, actually, for a Corvette. And as far as the specs, of course, 6.2 litre V8. You've got, as I said, less power than a Z06, which is 436 horsepower in the case of this car, with 428 pound-feet of torque, which is very healthy and not at all surprising for an American car. And it's actually not that heavy, even though it's an open top. And of course, you have to make a number of changes to a car's chassis and frame to accommodate not having a roof because of the necessary rigidity, it's still not actually a heavy car. It tips the scales at only 1,534 kilos, which, as I said, is very good. Now, as far as the performance goes, if I recall correctly, I believe the ZR1 is also in this game. I think it is. And the reason why I can't remember is because it's not on my list to review. Because, of course, it's been featured in loads of games since. And this series is just for the unicorns, so... If that is the case, which I think it is, it makes sense why you wouldn't really need to buy this car. But, as with some of the other cars that we've spoken about before, and doubtless that we will in future, this is just one of those occasions where, of course it's not necessary. It's one of those cars that you can buy if you want to, if you just like something that's different. And even though it doesn't bring anything radically new to the Corvette table beyond being an open top, which you don't see in that many games, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It means that from that point of view, you've got everything that's already great about a Corvette, but it's a convertible as well, which, as I said, you don't see in many games. So the Z06, the ZR1, even a base model Corvette in something like Test Drive Unlimited, they're the obvious choices. A Grand Sport is a pretty rare unicorn anyway, and the convertible version Version even more so. So this was always one of the cars that stood out to me, I think, from this game. There was stuff like the MC12 Corso, which of course is back now, the Koenigsegg CCXR, obviously, because it was pretty much the best all-round car in the game, and even something like the Toyota FJ Cruiser, which is one of the strangest unicorns, because you wouldn't think it was that hard to bring that car back, and it was really popular. This one stood out to me amongst those as well, because even though it wasn't necessarily as useful as some of those. The Toyota FJ, for instance, is great for speed in lower categories. The Koenigsegg is a Koenigsegg, so of course it's fast. And the Maserati was a, an outstanding alternative to something like a Radical or a Ferrari F50 GT, and it still is now in Horizon 4. This one, though, it doesn't really have any of those advantages, but, as I mentioned earlier on, it can do everything that a Corvette can usually do, but it's a convertible as well. So beyond that, it's actually a relatively simple review. Does it handle or perform any differently than you'd expect a C6 Corvette to? No, it doesn't. 
but that's not a disadvantage. It's almost like saying, is something that's like an alternative version of a Pagani Zonda any better than a Zonda already is? Well, no, a Zonda's already a great car, so even if it's exactly the same when you take the roof off, it's still a Zonda. Likewise with a Corvette, it's already a great car, so it's not like taking the roof off needs to make it better, it's still great and stuff like body rigidity doesn't matter at all in a game like this, so you cannot feel a difference, the performance is still great, and if you choose to, for instance, focus more on power upgrades and speed upgrades, you can get quite a healthy amount of spec and speed out of it without jumping classes too high. For instance, the base class on this car is only A. It's a 573 PI vehicle, so even within the A class, you can tune it up. You can get more power out of it. I can't recall exactly how much power you can get out of it without bumping it up into, I guess, S rank. But even in A, I'm pretty sure you can get maybe 600 horses out of it, possibly even more, as long as, of course, you focus all on power and not on handling. As soon as you start dropping weight and adding brakes and especially tires, of course, that's going to jump it up real fast. But overall, if you do want to try something different, this car definitely is just that. But with all of the great looks, great sound, and excellent all-round ability that any Corvette of this generation has. Overall, I would say that for bang for buck, the C6 might be the best Corvette we've ever had. The C4 is great. The C7 is technically superior. But the C6 is a strong car, be it on the road, on the racetrack, with a roof or without one. <laughs> and overall, it's certainly a unicorn of this game, and I don't think it's a car that they'll probably bring back anytime soon. But I could be wrong, and I hope I am, because it's a pretty cool little car. But overall, that's it for this review. Of course, check out my other Horizon reviews that I've already done, even some that I mentioned, like the FJ and the Koenigsegg. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.